Welcome to SSD Recognition Tutorial, a guide to build an event-driven app to label images on top of AWS. All the steps described in this video can be found on its GitHub repository wiki. SSD is an open-source serverless application platform that deploys to an AWS account. In the past five months, I've been working on a big company project which uses SST, and I can say it's a fabulous tool. SST is similar to the well-known serverless framework, both sharing the concept of infrastructure as code. The main advantage of SST is that all the infrastructure is defined using TypeScript, which VS Code can validate. The app we are about to build will be based on event-driven architecture. The user will use a React interface to upload new images to S3, the event. S3 will send these events to EventBridge, the broker. The broker will redirect the event to a Lambda function to get the image analyzed, the consumer. Event-driven architecture is excellent for allowing scalability using asynchronous programming and I would recommend this video by Christian Vielma to learn more about event-driven architecture. Let's get started by creating a new SST app called SST-Recognition and enter into the app directory. To run npm install, UUID package will be necessary and its types as well. Now open VS Code. From now on, let's use the integrated terminal. This step is optional to configure Prettier to not use single quotes and keep SST standard. By opening SST.json, ensure the desired AWS target region, where the application will be deployed. At the end of each chapter, we will commit the changes. Git init, add and commit. Bucket, queue and event bus. Let's create a bucket to temporarily store the uploaded images. SST gives out-of-the-box constructors for many AWS resources. The bucket needs to allow cores as it will receive the files directly from the front end. And be sure to set Event Bridge Enable True so that the notifications will be sent to Event Bridge. Now we are going to create a queue that will receive the notifications. Let's import the required packages and set some types. The queue resource needs to receive the stack and the buckets and needs to return a queue. So let's export const create queue. Inside it, we will create a policy to allow it to have access to recognition service. The queue consumer will be a lambda inside the functions process and the queue and its handler will need permission to access the previously created buckets. Finally, the event bus need to be created. Let's import all the necessary packages and define its types to receive a bucket and a queue so it can connect them. The function create bus will return an event bus using these default values. Here we will define a rule, so every object created in the bucket should send a new message to the queue. An index file will make resources easy to be imported. And now we already have a bucket, a queue and a bus. So we are going to customize my stack file created by SSD to import the resources we just created. Remove this API that came after the SSD default installation to finally call for the functions that will create the required bucket, queue and event bus. At last, let's add and commit the change to Git. Time to create the Lambda function that will process the uploaded images. As usual, let's do some importing, including recognition service from AWS. We will create new instances for recognition and S3. The helper method getLabels will receive an S3 notification and use recognition to return the detected image labels. 
another helper function, delete image, we will be responsible for deleting the image right after it is processed. Both helpers will be used in this try catch for the main handler. And for now, we are only outputting the detected labels to the console. Let's run npm start for the first time to deploy our infrastructure and get the development environment ready. Add the AWS credentials profile name based on your local configuration. Currently, the process should take a while. For me, it was about 10 minutes, which I'm fast forwarding to not make it too boring. This is not SSD's fault, but some kind of speed limit of AWS CDK CloudFormation services, as you can check while running other tools like serverless framework. And ready. Let's open the SST console in the browser by clicking on the URL. The console offers a helpful interface to interact with many resources created with SST. Let's check for buckets and click on the upload button to choose a sample image from our computer. The image was uploaded to the bucket. And by looking at the VS Code terminal on the left bottom, we can check that the labels were detected. The first one refers to a person and has many instances. Two. By the way, this sample image is from an Indonesian photographer called Kandeshan Seruyan. Going back to VS Code's terminal, the console log also tells us the image was correctly deleted after the process. From now on, let's keep SST running on the left side and open another terminal window to add the chains to Git and commit them. I could say that the central idea of this tutorial was already achieved, and in the following chapters we will keep working only to wrap it up in some kind of ready-to-be-used application. DynamoDB will be used to store each result after the image processing. Let's create a simple table for it import the required packages and use the SST table constructor. It will be necessary to update the queue, where we are going to add table to its options parameter, so its handle function has access to the table name through environment variables. The queue and its handler will need permissions to access the table as well, now, in the process handler, let's import and instantiate DynamoDB and add a new helper called Save Labels to receive the recognition response and save it on the database. The console logs inside the handler will be replaced by Save Labels. After, we need to add the table to the resources index and to the my stack as well, just after the bucket and before the queue. So we can pass table as an option to the later. By hitting enter in the bottom left terminal, we will redeploy our infrastructure changes, as we created a new DynamoDB table and also changed permissions and environment variables. After a while, it will finish. So let's open the SST console again to upload a new image from our computer and go to DynamoDB to see that a new record was created with all the detected labels, just like we've previously seen at the terminal. Back to the VS Code, add the change to Git and commit. API Gateway will be used to create an endpoint to retrieve all the stored results. In the Resources API TS, we will import the required package and define its types where options will receive the previously created table. Let's create the API. 
exposing the table name through environment variables, routing the get method to the results handler we are up to create. After, we will add the API to the resources index and, inside my stack, import create API from resources. Add it just after the event bus and output the API URL to the console. Now let's create the handler function, initially importing the required packages and instantiating DynamoDB. The function will extract the table name from the environment variables and read the data from DynamoDB, sorting it the most recent record at the top. Let's hit enter to deploy the infrastructure changes. Wait for a while ready. We can even see the API endpoint in the terminal output. Now accessing SST console, let's click on the API option to see the get endpoint we've just created. And by clicking on the send button, a response with all the results will be shown, containing all the previously processed images with their labels and other properties. The API is finished and tested. Going back to VS Code Terminal, we are going to add and commit the changes to Git. It's time to set up the frontend. We are going to use React to upload new images and show their labels. Inside Resources, Site TS, we need to import the required packages and define the create site interface and options. SST offers a ready to be used VIT static site constructor, where we just need to pass some environment variables. Let's update the resources index. Import the resource into my stack just after the API. Call create site with API and bucket options and return the site URL to the console. Now let's use Vit itself to create a new React app inside the front-end directory. Not forgetting to run npm install inside front-end, which should take some seconds to be finished. Let's install Axios to perform requests, Moment, and another package to handle SVGs. Also, we will need a specific package to the SST development environment. Opening front-end package.json, the dev script should be customized with SST-env. For the SVG package, the vitconfig.ts will need some extra code. Moving on, let's clean up the front-end directory and perform some updates in index.html. We are going to create a header component to display the recognition icon, our app title and subtitle, and a button link to its GitHub repository. The status component will be used to show the API loading activity. Finally, let's change our app component, replacing all of its original content with header and a placeholder. Following the instructions on the week, we will download the required assets, including some style sheets and SVGs. Using VS Code sidebar, we can check for the assets that were downloaded and for the components that we've just created. Let's hit enter to deploy changes. It should take a while. Ready. On the right terminal, we are going to start the React frontend and click on the link to open it in the browser where you should see the correct layout with the header and the placeholder. 
Back to the VS Code, let's open another terminal to add and commit the chains to Git. The React context will store the last uploaded ID and the selected results item. First, let's create the item type, which will have the properties ID, created at, labels and error. For the app context TSX, we need to import some methods from React and the item type we've just created and define the app context interface to expose upload ID and selected item. The app context will be initialized with empty methods for set upload ID and set selected item. Now let's define app context provider props with children and the app context provider itself with react use state for upload ID and selected item and returning the app context dot provider. Finally, we will export use app context equals use context app context. In the app dot tsx, we should import the context and wrap the header and content with it. Let's save the modifications, add them to git and commit. For the upload UI, let's create its main component, upload.tsx. Import React, user effect, AWS SDK, UUID, the context, upload hook and status. Region, bucket name and identity pool ID will be extracted from the environment variables and credentials will come from AWS Cognito Identity Credentials. Now export the upload component, which will receive upload ID, set upload ID and set selected item from the context, with use effect to reset the state every time upload ID changes. The upload state and methods will come from the use upload hook and handle upload will be fired just after an upload to handle it. Receiving the file and using the upload method from use upload hook. All this code can be accessed in the GitHub repo related to this video. The component will return a div id upload and inside it, the status informs if an upload is being performed. Now, a header upload, the form with the input type file, and a scrollable area to show the last uploaded file name and the image, any error that may occur, and an info box saying that any file will be removed from S3 after its processing. Now let's create the hook that will perform the upload logic. Import the required packages and define its params and upload params. We will export use upload hook, define all its states, config AWS region and credentials, and create a new S3 instance with the target bucket. Helper reset state will set the state to its initial values. Now the upload method will receive ID, file and a callback. We'll first reset the state and perform a try catch to upload the file to S3. Set the error in its catch and finally set uploading to false at the end. At last, we need to return the methods and properties that will be exposed and save the file. Let's open app.tsx, import the upload component and return it inside the contents. By accessing the app front-end in the browser, we can try to perform an upload 
which should return an error message. Due to the lack of the AWS Cognito setup, which we will see in the upcoming chapter. Let's add the chains to Git and commit them. It will be necessary to allow anonymous front-end users to upload files to the buckets. Using SST helpers, we will create a new stack resource of import the required packages and define some types. This stack will create a new AWS Cognito Identity Pool, which will allow unauthenticated users to upload files to the bucket. Inside the front-end stack, we will import Cognito Type, update the Create Site options with Auth and Extract Auth from parameters, to expose the Identity Pool ID as an environment variable. Now let's update the resources index by adding auth, which will be imported inside my stack, to be called just before the site, remembering to pass it as a parameter for create site. Let's hit enter to deploy the changes in the infrastructure, wait for a while, and restart the front-end to make sure the new environment variables will be defined. In the browser, we can now retry the upload, choose an image from our local computer, wait to be uploaded, to check that the image was successfully uploaded. The terminal log also shows the image was processed, the labels were saved, and the image was deleted from S3 at the end. Let's add the chains to Git and commit them. The results UI will show a list of the images that have been processed. Let's create results.tsx and import use effect, use ref, item, use fetch, results, item, and status. The result type will be a list of items. So let's export results as a functional component, where we will extract some methods and properties from the hook useFetch. And useEffect will fetch the items as soon as the component is mounted. The component will return a div containing the status component with the fetch status and header with results and its count, and a ternary returning a possible error, or the list of items if they were successfully fetched. Now let's create resultsItem.tsx, import moment, item, context, and the SVG arrow, define the components props, and export the component itself, which will extract selected item, set selected item, and set upload ID from the context. The helper get item class name will return the CSS class for the current selected item, and handle item click will call set selected item and reset set upload ID to undefine it. Finally, let's return the list item, containing a div with item created ads and item ID. The hook useFetch will be responsible for logic of fetching data from the API. We will import useState, Axios and Axios error, and export useFetch, which will contain some states to control the fetching. The method fetch items will try to fetch the results from the API, catch an error, and set the state. In the end, we need to return the properties and methods to be exposed. Now, in the app.tsx, let's import the results, place it just after the upload, and save the file. Opening the browser, we will see the results component with the list of all results.
we can upload a new image, but we still need to manually refresh the page to get the last item listed in the results. Back to the VS Code, let's add the change to Git and commit. Finally, let's create the components to show the image labels. In the file labels.tsx, we need to import the app context and labels item. It will return a functional component. Inside it, we will extract selected item from use app context. And the helper render labels return will depend on the selected item value. When there is no selected item, it will return a message asking the user to select an item. When the selected item has an error, it will return the error message. As the default return, it will return the selected item labels, using the labels item component for each item. Finally, let's return a header labels and call the render labels helper. In the file labels item tsx, we will import the recognition type from AWS and use it to define the component props. Labels item will be a functional component where we will extract name, confidence, and instances from label. Let's store confidence's rounded value and get instances length and return a list item with the labels name confidence and instances information, where a bar will be shown with its width based on the confidence value. Let's open app.tsx, import labels component and add it just below results. In the browser, we will see the labels being rendered, where we can select different results. Now, let's upload a file that's not a real image to force an error. Wait to be uploaded and process it. Reload the application manually, one more time, to check that the labels are also handling error messages. For the successfully processed items in green, all their labels will be listed. Back to VS Code, we will add the changes to Git and commit. As the final touch, we'll use pulling to get the UI updated after each upload. Let's create use pulling hook, import use effect and use state from React, define the hook parameters and export the function itself, where we will have the pulling state, the timeout between each pulling and the use effect to start pulling after start trigger. Function start pulling will perform an action every given interval until the stop conditional is true. In the end, let's return start pulling and the pulling state. In the results component, we need to import the app context and the pulling hook. Define the pulling interval constant, extract upload ID and set selected item from the context. Create result half as a reference to the result state because the pooling is using timeouts. Add a helper function to find the last uploaded ID in the results. And finally, call the use pooling hook and pass all the required parameters. In the status, let's add pooling to the array. Let's go to the browser, reload the application and choose another image to be uploaded. Wait a little bit to check that the pulling was triggered. And now a fetch is being performed behind the scenes every 3 seconds, until the last upload ID will be found in the results. Match. And those are the results labels for the last uploaded image. Even a tie was found by AWS recognition. Back to VS Code, let's add the change to Git and commit. The SST recognition app is complete, where all the necessary infrastructure, backend and frontend were structured using SST. As a reminder, all the steps seen in this video 
could also be followed in the SST recognition repository on GitHub, where in the README file there is a link to the repository week with a step-by-step -step walkthrough. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks.